Today we're building a DIY submarine that in my opinion should have existed for a long time, but for some reason nobody has made it before. We were kind of stupid when almost two years ago we thought that this can be done in just a few weeks. Because it turns out that making a DIY submarine that's cheap and extremely simple to build is in fact extremely difficult to design. Or it would be easier if we didn't want to make it also maneuverable, fast, expandable with attachments and make it actually usable deep underwater. Here's what we came up with. This is the CPS-3. We set out to create a much simpler and cheaper drone than any of our previous ones. In order to build this thing, these are all the components and tools you need. We try to minimize the number of items as much as possible. Let's start with this pipe. So our first challenge is that we can't use custom 3D printed parts, like in every other project on our channel. That's because we want to make this design possible to build for everyone, even if they don't have a 3D printer, and 3D printers can be expensive. And that's a major obstacle, because 3D printing makes things very convenient. We won't be able to make custom parts that perfectly fit all the other components. Instead, for the frame of the drone, we'll need to use only flat parts. These can be CNC cut from thin sheets of plastic. You can also 3D print them if you want, but CNC cutting is just generally a lot cheaper. Now we need to use these parts in new creative ways that somehow connect together. And this motor mount is one of my favorite solutions we found. After you put all the propellers onto the motors, you take one of these, put all the screws in, and the spacers. By the way, I'm following a step-by-step -step instruction manual, which we wrote earlier. So you insert another part like this, screw in the motor, add four more screws, and now it can slide into the pipe. Here comes the good part. How to attach it to the pipe? Well, the motor mount is made out of two sheets, so that now I can take a threaded rod and insert it through here and then in between the two sheets, and also in between these two screws. Take a second one and add it on the bottom. After we secure them, the motor mount can't go anywhere. I just needed to copy everything over to get the other side. The third motor goes onto the bottom sheet and a pipe goes over it, securing it in place with four zip ties. Just so you know, in our first and second prototypes of CPS-3, we tried using PVC pipes for the entire frame of the drone. However, first of all, it turns out that for some reason these joints are pretty expensive, and second, we couldn't figure out how to mount the motors well without using 3D prints such as these. So that's why we scrapped that idea and opted for the CNC cut sheets. Now let's do the electronics. It's quite different to what you've seen previously on our channel. The first board is for the battery. I just need to solder the battery holders to it, just like that, one, two, three, four, and insert the cells. Actually, after recording this clip, we did much more limit testing of the drone, and the battery holders were getting way too hot, so we replaced them with these. They have a better connection. The second board is what's more exciting. This one controls the drone. Here's our thought process behind the design. Six and a half years ago, we wanted to build our first good underwater drone. We didn't know anything about electronics or programming, but we decided to use a very cheap Arduino board to control it. This thing here. Let's say we failed at making the drone good, but the Arduino still makes a lot of sense. It's a very popular microcontroller, which we can program so that it steers the drone and also communicates with the surface. It is very limited, so we can only run very simple code on this, but I believe it's also an advantage, since you can quickly learn how to program Arduinos and then modify the capabilities of the CPS-3 yourself. The Arduino goes in here, and then we connect the electronic speed controllers for the motors. 
As you can see, we made these custom green PCBs just for the CPS3, and it makes wiring much, much simpler than what we did in the past. But if you're building this, how are you supposed to get one? Well, it's often not possible to go to an online store and order just a single custom PCB like this. That's why we ordered a hundred of each, and now you can buy them from us on our website. And in the package we also decided to include all of the flat CNC cut parts. More on that later. Now let's solder a connector to this cable. It's for plugging in the tether for communication and also charging the drone after the mission. And also for reprogramming the Arduino anytime we want. So in order to program the drone, you plug this connector to a USB cable, plug into your computer, open this folder in the VS Code program, and click here. Loading, and it's done. The drone should be able to operate. Another thing this drone needs is a camera, of course, so that we can see what's underwater. At first we didn't know how to get a camera affordable enough for this project. That is before we found this one. It's a plug and play car reverse parking camera and it comes with the display already, which we can also use. The analog quality is not great, but it will be good enough for navigating. If we need a higher quality recording, I'll just mount a GoPro. It's finally time to make everything waterproof. This time it's quite straightforward. We'll use epoxy resin. We need to mix the correct amounts and pour everything into the boxes. The only downside of this method is the fact that if something inside the epoxy breaks, we'll need to replace the entire board. But we made sure that it doesn't happen by limit testing everything. And of course you can still reprogram it after if needed. On the upside, it's fast, it's cheap and it's durable, because it could theoretically work very deep underwater. Now we can start putting everything together. The boxes attach to the bottom sheet. By the way, we've created a table listing every component along with the purchase link. You can get it for free under a link in the description. I think the list is quite short, all things considered, comparing for example to our more expensive CPS-5 drone. Nonetheless, I agree that buying a kit with all of the parts in it would be much simpler. That's why we are also currently working on making those kits a reality. They will be ready by about January next year. If you're interested, sign up to our waitlist with another link below. Here we also need to mount some buoyancy foam, which will balance the weight, making sure the drone doesn't sink or float. It should be placed on top of the frame, this way it also doubles as a self-leveling mechanism. And we've completed the CPS-3 drone. But before we go test it, we should also quickly build the remote controller. More CNC parts, joysticks, buttons, the camera screen, another PCB, Arduino, a couple more components, fold it over and it's done. If you're keen on 3D printing, it's also really simple to make your own upgrades. For example, I designed and then printed this hydrodynamic shell, but there are also additional spare wires which can be connected to any electronic attachment you'd like, from a grabber to a pH sensor. We might build some of these in the future, but you're welcome to try to build them yourself. Right, it would be funny if it doesn't work after all of this, so let's actually test it. We've teleported to the absolute clearest lake in Poland. Let's go. This drone has only three motors, one vertical and two horizontal, which means that we needed to build it such that it passively always levels horizontally in the water. Although we put the vertical motor slightly towards the front, so that it changes pitch while swimming forward. That's why it feels maneuverable, it's kind of like an airplane. So we took our second drone, this one, and together dove to the very bottom, over 20 meters. I see something, I think it's the roof.
After swimming inside, I could see some detail, but I don't know what the structure is. And here I tangled my tether. I even could see that on my screen. Do you see this? Uh, yeah. But somehow I freed myself. If you'd like to build the CPS free yourself or with your family, we have written step-by-step -step instruction manuals. Then we filmed videos for each chapter explaining the design in much more detail. We call it the CPS free course since you build and learn about underwater drones at the same time. We really wanted to make it beginner friendly, so we even filmed video tutorials for soldering, using a multimeter and other basic tools, in case it's your first project ever. It takes just about 3 or 4 days of work to build. We've put a lot of work and so we are selling the course, but you can start by logging into the first chapter, which is completely for free. And it includes the full list of all components with shopping links I mentioned. That's the first link in the description. After two years, we are still improving the design and working on the kits with all the components in one box. So the more people decide to start this course, the faster we can achieve that and create more awesome upgrades. Alright, see you next time. Here's another video you might enjoy.